All right, uh, we have Laide with us. Uh, thank you for joining us for this uh, AMA interview, Laide. Yeah, thank you for having me, Nitesh. I'm happy to be here. All right, uh, so uh, I've got 10 questions for you. The first one uh, is, can you tell me what problem do you solve for a company? Uh, in general or for my consulting? For your consulting uh, project. Yeah, I'm a fractional product manager, so I work with a lot of different companies mainly startups. I've actually worked with a few Fortune 500 companies as well uh, who don't need, who need a fractional part-time product management help, who probably have product teams internally that are uh, over-resourced and, I mean, under-resourced and are working on other projects uh, for the big companies. And then for the startups, usually they don't really have uh, a full-time product manager. So they want somebody to come in and uh, just help out when possible. Uh, and so a lot of what I do is work with a lot of different companies and offer, you know, 10 to 15 hours a week of product management services. These companies usually have their engineering staff in-house, which is great. And so I just come in and help manage the engineering process, write product requirements, help clarify product strategy, help figure out what is our overall plan for product development towards whatever milestone the company wants to reach. So product launch, uh, iteration of a product, uh, something else that as it relates to to the product as well uh, and then also on top of that help create a product roadmap uh, to sort of help them in the future um, beyond what I'm capable to offer once I leave that production role and, and go do something else so so far it's been working well uh, it's been it's been a great experience for the last couple of years but at a high level really just come in as a part-time PM to help teams who don't have the full-time uh, budget the full-time the full-time resource to, and who need a part-time person to come in and just help shepherd what they have and really bring some clarity and strategy to the product development and product launch and product requirements process. Very interesting. So um, I'm curious, what does it uh, look like to be a fractional product manager? Like, can you give me an example uh, of a, maybe a recent project that you did uh, with a startup? Yeah, I'm currently working with the AI startup right now. And the founder found me, I have a product blog and the founder found me in my blog, I guess, and reached out. Uh, and he had a team of engineers that he's working with. They're all distributed and remote. And he's a founder and he's like, I'm not a product manager, but you know, there seems to be a lack of alignment in what we're working on. There's just a lot of questions. There's not a lot of clarity. And so I need to do a better job of doing that, but I honestly don't have the time. So I need someone to come in and just take over the product development effort. And so I come in really try to understand the landscape, understand the problem, Meet each, meet, meet each and every one of the engineering and design team. And then I sort of try to figure out, okay, what is our goal? I sit with the founder and I try to understand what's our goal? Uh, what is it that we're trying to accomplish? What's What are the next few milestones that we need to hit? And then based on that, really try to step back and understand, well, why does this company exist? What problems is this company actually solving? What does success look like? Uh, and then start with, you know, for a particular project, like here's a project brief, which is like, here's a problem, here's what we're solving it for, here's why we're doing it, here's what we're not doing. And just kind of write a document then, try to get circulate that with the founder, get buy-in, get feedback, then ultimately from there develop a fully fledged requirement where each engineering team sort of is aware of what they need to get done. And really I just sort of come in to help unblock the development process, provide clarity to development process. And as a fractional product manager, I, you know, I offer like 10 to 20 hours a week, depending on on the company. Some companies, you know, initially it's always a little bit more, what's well, like 20 hours a week just to get things up and running uh, and just set the overall process. And then eventually I sort of scale it back to 10 hours a week where it's just like I come in, make sure we're moving forward in the development process and make sure that the next set of requirements are kind of available, available to uh, unblock the development team with any questions and really just make sure we're hitting our targets and our milestones. So as a fractional PM, you're sort of more hands-on than you, I, I would be at like uh, a regular company and what I did in the past. I was a manager of product managers in the past. And so a lot of my work was um, managing the team and not actually doing the work. And uh, now it's like, I actually get to come in and actually do the work. So dig deep, write requirements, write a bunch of stuff, uh, manage day-to-day -day development efforts, kind of also sometimes an engineering manager, depending on the company. And so it's a little bit of everything, but uh, I think so far so good. It's been working so far. And so a lot of companies just kind of find that uh, really helpful. So that's sort of where I come in. That's really, really insightful. Um, so what's one thing that you like about your work? Yeah, I like, at least for the companies I've worked at, I like the sort of independence of it all. I think as a fractional consultant, um, 
I've always worked prior to this, I've worked in very, very intense product jobs where the work was my life and that was all I did and nothing else. And obviously got burned out, which is sort of what led me to take a break. And then once I took a break, the opportunities to be a part-time product manager came about. And so one of the things I really like is, well, first of all, it's the flexibility in my time. So I kind of front load a lot of the work I do. So I like write all my documentation, write all my requirements. I'm available on Slack if the team needs me, but I'm not really in a bunch of meetings. Like I was in a, in the past that like more traditional product management companies uh, here, people tend to just work more asynchronously. So we're working async all the time. So uh, it's a lot of Slack, a lot of huddles, um, but it's not as many um, standard meetings that just take up your day without anything. So it frees up time for me to do other things. And I think also here, I have to be more detailed. So I have to write a lot more detailed requirements because I want to make sure that since the team is in different time zones, uh, they're not waiting for me because they're, they're not clear on something. So I tend to get really, really detailed in what I write and what I expect because I don't want any confusion. Uh, and so it's really forced me to be a little bit more detail oriented, which is great uh, skill to have anyway. Um, but it also helps eliminate questions and bottlenecks. And in case I'm not available, the team is clear on what the requirements and the, the expectation is for the work that they're being asked to do. Right. Uh, and uh, can you talk a little more about what made you go from working as a full-time employee to working as a consultant? Yeah, I, I back on about me, I've worked as a product manager in a lot of different companies, including Sonos, the speaker company, Amazon. Uh, I've done a, a lot of different startups. I was ahead of product at a lot of startup I was at. And, you know, it's, it's I really love my job as a product manager. I've always described it as the perfect role for me. Uh, I used to be an engineer prior to becoming a product manager and I really love a good, wanted to have a good business understanding. So I felt like product management kind of blended both sort of business and engineering where I could, I could understand what was going on the engineering side, but also understand the business side and kind of communicate uh, to both parties uh, accordingly. Uh, and so product was a great role for me and really did that for, you know, about a decade or so. And then uh, during the pandemic, obviously, <laughs> I was working, everybody was, people were really bored with their jobs. I actually wasn't. I was very busy and overworked and I was doing 80 hour weeks. So I was managing teams in Europe and I was managing teams in Asia. Uh, I worked for a hardware company, and so I did a lot of hardware, software, product management, and ultimately got burned out and realized that, you know, I was running myself into the ground, and, you know, we launched a product, and we launched a product, and I didn't care. <laughs> Usually, you know, product launches are, like, big moments of celebration, and I had no energy to celebrate. That was how tired I was, and so ultimately felt like I didn't have anything else to offer the company, and I didn't want to cheat the company with my lack of effort, so decided to take a step back, took some time off, really kind of reflected, and Luckily for me, as I took time off, um, you know, I think testament to hopefully some of the work I did in the past, people actually reached out and were like, hey, I heard you're available. Are you open to part-time work? Are you open to part-time jobs? And that was great. And so it was great that my first few jobs came from people who had worked with me in the past, who had referred me, who had either, who you know, interviewed me and I, you know, didn't accept the offer and they still wanted to find a way to work with me and made it work part-time. And then eventually a lot of my follow-on clients came from my product blog, which I have, where I just talk about like product management practices. And I think because of that, people reached out as well. So I've been very lucky in the sense that I haven't um, done as much grinding to get my new clients. Uh, but, uh, you know, eventually that time will come if I keep doing consulting, because that will eventually dry out. But uh, so far, so good. And, and, and hopefully I'll enjoy it for as long as I can until I have to, you know, hit the pavement and beg people to hire me. But until then... Uh, pretty happy with where I am right now. That's so uh, fascinating. Like you just answered a bunch of questions that I had listed. So, uh, oh, no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, that's perfect. It's even better. <laughs> so now I can get deeper. Um, tell, me, tell me more about this uh, product management blog. Um, why did you start it? And uh, how do you get ideas for uh, new articles? I started it uh, because I would get a lot of questions from people who would just reach out to me on LinkedIn or cold email me and people, people wanted to have a lot of one-on-ones or coffee chats. And I was in a lot of coffee chats and, uh, you know, I'm happy to talk and help however I can, but ultimately I just realized like I'm a one person and I can't really scale. And so I decided I needed to write a blog about um, just how I think about product management. So to answer your question, a lot of my topics come from questions that people ask me or things that I've heard people like talk about in you know different channels and communities I'm a part of and uh, really just trying to have clarity on that. So um, I write, I don't write as often as I should, unfortunately, <laughs> um, but in, when I started it off, I would write like once a month and, you know, write in different topics from writing software 
requirements, right, and harder requirements, thinking about product prioritization, thinking about uh, product road mapping, thinking about uh, working with the engineering team and your technical team, uh, how do you communicate with stakeholders, uh, how do you make decisions effectively, so a lot of like what I write is sort of on that, uh, but later topics kind of come from, I take inspiration from anywhere, it's, you know, there's a online water cooler conversation happening over product management, and there's a lot of discussion, I'm like, oh, this could be a good topic to like really think through and write about. So then I'll, I'll write something about it. Uh, if I'm going through something as I'm working on my my projects and stuff like that, that I'm like, oh, this would be fun to write on, I'll, I'll, I'll write about it too. So I kind of take inspiration from anywhere. And, you know, I, if anybody has any topic they want me to write about or questions that they want to see, like, I'm totally happy to to take those and and, and spin them into to blogs. So uh, to answer your question, it's really from anywhere, really. But I always want to make sure that it's effective and helpful to the people reading it. It's not really for me, it's everybody else. So um, it's been a good, like I've been in it for the last, I would say three years or so. So it's been it's been good to to have it out there. It's so cool. Um, yeah, let's talk you. about Mink. <laughs> why why did <laughs> yeah. you start Mink? Yeah, uh, Mink is a company, basically what we do is we're trying to make tools for better freelancing. Uh, and, you know, as, a, as somebody who's currently a freelancer and a, part-time consultant, uh, you know, you realize the process of getting your, your job is kind of tedious. You know, you have to write proposals, which they may not, they may or may not read or they may not sign. And then once you do that, you have to figure out like invoicing, you have to send that every so often. And then you have to like manage your work. Cause if you're an independent worker like me, when I'm working as a team of one, you have to like manage a lot of that effort yourself. And so me and my co-founders uh, were kind of thinking through like, we're all, we've all been freelancers and consultants consultants at one point in our lives. And so we're just trying to think through like, what is what is something that we want to solve that is actually going to add value to the world? And, you know, initially the company started up as, uh, the company initially was sort of spun as a way for creators to manage your business. But as we were digging deep into that layer and into that, that side of things, everyone's trying to do that. We were like, well, there's actually a space here for people who are starting out as consultants who are like, what is a proposal? How do I write one? And usually you look on Google, you like find a template, you kind of copy it and you hope to God that it looks good enough. And then you hope to God that when it comes to invoicing, you like look on Google, you like copy a template and you're like, okay, I think I got it. Right. And everyone sort of figures that out, but there really isn't a holistic tool that ties your proposal, which is what you say you're going to do to actually the invoicing, which is when you get paid to actually your day-to-day -day work. So imagine I write a proposal today, uh, I tell you I'm going to do ABC and with ABC um, on the deliverables task, we tie that to some amount of money. So if I finish A, I get this amount of money. If I finish B, I get this amount of money. If I finish C, I get this amount of money. And then automatically when I'm done with, with A, I automatically ge generate an invoice uh, from the system that gets submitted to the client and then that gets paid into my account. Same with task B and C. And also an additional component that we offer is helping you with your project management efforts. So once you have a deliverable task, eventually that's going to become sort of a, a project management sort of task for you to kind of manage your work on your own. And so uh, we just kind of started a company because we just felt like people getting in, usually the questions are, how do I figure out a proposal? How do I figure out a contract? How do I figure out invoicing? How do I like make all that make sense? And we wanted to kind of start with something that we thought could be useful for, for the community. Oh, that sounds really cool. Um... Hey, uh, tell me more about how uh, your consulting helps you uh, build Mink. Like being a fractional consultant uh, helps you um, build uh, Mink in a better way. Yeah, it's great because I think as I noted, I've written, I've written for everybody who's reached out to me uh, to work with me. I've written a lot of proposals uh, to to get them to kind of see what I offer, and so it's a lot of. Now I have a template that I use, which is great. It's not as much work, but the first time I read it, I was like, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but I was able to figure it out. And so that experience of doing that and also invoicing, right? That I had to like submit invoices every particular pay period. And sometimes I will just forget to send an invoice <laughs> because you're just busy. And I'm like, wait, I don't understand. Like, why am I not getting paid? Like, oh, I never sent an invoice. Okay. And they never really asked me either. So, <laughs> so, so I think, you know, having those experiences uh, in how uh, personally and firsthand, really translates into Mink because I understand the problem intimately and I've talked to enough people. We did a lot of user research. We talked to enough people to know that there's a problem here. And so we also use Mink, you know, we're all, all my co-founders, we're, you know, when we're not working on Mink, we're sort of like freelancers for now to so eventually do that full time. Um, and, you know, we use Mink uh, to, for our, any contract we have, even if we hire someone to work on, our, on, on Mink for us, we're going to use Mink. We send them a proposal through Mink and we say, here's what we want you to do. 
here's your proposal, here's how you're going to get paid and all that kind of stuff. We write it for them. So at Mink, you can write it, you know, if you're paying someone to do work for you, you can write a proposal document. Uh, we call it the Mink doc. So we call it a proposal plus invoicing plus project management system. We call it an, a Mink document. So you can write a Mink document if you hire someone to do work for you. You can also hire, you can also write a Mink document if you're the one who wants someone to work with you. And so we, eat our own dog food really we like use it however we can to just work out the kinks and so we're still in early access it's free for anybody who wants to try it out and check it out and provide us with feedback uh eventually you know we'll we'll see what that business model business model looks like but for now it's totally free to use uh, and we welcome everyone to try it and give us as much feedback as you can and hopefully it serves you uh and serves you for the work you're doing it's amazing uh okay one final question for you Lina. yeah um how, how do you prevent burnout now? How do I prevent burnout? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a great question. Uh, so I sort of had to set, you know, healthy boundaries. So um, I, you know, I, I, well, this first thing is the mental physical aspect. So I've incorporated, you know, meditation and also exercise into my life uh, almost every day. So I, you know, going out for walks. Uh, and if I'm not going out for walks, I'm doing Pilates or I'm working out like circuit training at the gym. And I do that, you know, three to four times a week. Then I ride my bike. I live, I'm very lucky. I live in Los Angeles, California, and I live very close to the beach. So one of the things I love to do is I take my bike for a ride and I ride along the beach and the bike paths on the beach, which is fun. And so I do that, you know, once a week or so. Uh, and, you know, that's really important to me. So, you know, starting off my day with just meditation and positivity, doing exercises later on during the day, walking, just catching some fresh air. That's really important. And also setting healthy boundaries. Um, I used to work myself into the ground. Like I would have 7 a.m. meetings, still midnight calls. And I've really learned to just start setting boundaries and, and say, you know, here's the time of, amount of time available to work. Uh, and whatever is not done will get done the next day and really just managing my time and really learning to say no. I think that's the one thing that, you know, I struggle with is, is really saying no. Uh, uh, especially you just, you know, you, I grew up in a, you know, culture and a family where you just kind of say yes, 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 until you run yourself into the ground. And I've had to learn to say, I can't do that today, but I'll do it tomorrow. I can't do it today, but I'll do this one. Or I've already done this, you know, really trying to just have healthy conversations with myself and with the clients. Um, but I think most importantly, it's just learning that I can't do it all. And I'm not a superhero and it's okay to just take a break and, 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 um, not do everything all at once. And so, I've learned to just manage that, um, you know, prioritize, I think it's really important. So what's, what's important, what absolutely must get done? What is that one or two things you have to get done today? And I do those. So I have a list during the week that I create on Sundays and I'll say, okay, here's all the stuff I need to get done this week. And it's usually like three or four important things that I need to get done throughout the week. And everything else is like, if I have time, I'll get to it. And so I don't sweat it as long as I get those three to four things. I'm like, great, I'm good. Whereas in the past, I would have, you know, a list of 30, 40 things and I would try to get everything done. Like, in one day, which is like ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, and so um, now I think it's just having a better, you know, healthy sense of boundaries, being able to say no, also taking care of my mental uh, wellness and my physical wellness as well. And so I think that's helped because I think when you're actually going out and getting fresh air and in nature and working out, it does help your mental psyche and your mental mood. And that also helps your physical. So everything's really connected. And so I think really being more in touch with that has been really helpful uh, to prevent burnout. Uh, and it, it's a great question. Burnout is very real and self-care is very important. And I think people need to like, just take care of themselves because if there's no you, you can't really there's no work, there's nothing. So you come first. And I think that's really important to, to remember that your health and wellness is more important. That's amazing. Yeah, uh, you, you just said so many uh, like amazing strategies there. Uh, I love that. It's very Thank insightful. You. <laughs> yeah. All right. You, uh, yeah, you're very welcome, right? Um, and this is the end of our interview. Uh, oh, this was a very fun conversation. Uh, thank you so much for joining yeah. me. Of course. Thank you, Yash. It was great to be here and hopefully people found this useful and helpful. And if anybody wants to reach out, I am available on Slack. Feel free to message me. I'm happy to get on a call, one-on-one -on -one coffee chats, like totally open to just meeting new people and helping whoever, however I can. So yeah, excited. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much.